Do, 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 do. We are making the tutorial on top of the world. Good morning, everyone. We are literally doing today's tutorial on the rooftop of a friend that is on top of the beach in Tel Aviv. I think we could not have a better location for this. Last time we did a couch tutorial, it was this one over here, and I just got tons of comments from all of you saying, why don't you do a Togo couch? Well, you asked for it, we are doing it. This Mario Bellini was absolutely my first attempt, and I think that now I got a little bit more experience that I can try this other couch and turn it out so good in like half of the time. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, this is the couch everybody's dreaming of. Super comfortable and super design. What we need for this tutorial is foam, two meters, then one meter, and thickness, 10 centimeters. Then you're gonna need the material that you most prefer. I chose Alcantara that also has like a double layering inside that is gonna make it super resistant and then some extra foaming to make the material super soft. Extra things are very simple equipment and that is paper, tape, a marker, a precision knife, a meter, and some spray glue. It's important that it's spray glue for foam, it's important that it resists. At the end, we're gonna take a, a sewing machine and also two meters of a zipper, buttons that I have already covered in the same material, and a very long needle. Guys, as you know, I love to make tutorials that are achievable for everyone. And this does not mean that all of them are simple, but all of them are done with very simple equipment. As a start, we're gonna have to cut the foam in three. This means 66 times six centimeters, and you just mark the line and trace it. Then you're gonna go with your precision knife and cut it out. It's gonna be exactly three identical shapes. Also, the depth of the couch is 80 and not one meter, and that's why we're gonna have to go and cut away 20 centimeters, so to make 80 centimeters depth. Believe it or not, we have already built the entire base of the couch. What is left to do is take out your glue spray and spray it on each side of the foam that you want to attach. Now, like every spray in the world, it's a lot easier if you spray it in vertical compared, compared to it lying down. So put them in vertical, spray them, wait a few seconds and then stick them together. Shake, shake, shake. Gotta shake, shake, shake. Shake your spray glue. Shake your spray glue. Do it on both sides of the foam. Twelve seconds later. So, the instructions say that you need to wait 10 to 20 seconds and then place one on top of each other and then wait 10 minutes. So I guess that we're just getting tanned for a little bit. Well, if I use myself as a heavyweight for it. Time to go ahead and do it on the third layer of the foam. Spray both sides. Wait for it to dry a few seconds and then place one on top of the other and put something heavy on top. Now that we did the base, it's time to work on the back of the couch and we're gonna do it with the second piece of foam. This time we're not gonna cut them equally. We have to do 70, 70 and one of 60. There you go, DIY Army. You know the drill. Just mark the centimeters that you need. Draw a line to connect them and cut it out with your precision knife. Do it three times. Time for some spraying, you would do it on both sides, wait a few seconds, place one on top of the other, you let it dry, like this. And we're waiting again. Time to spray the third layer again. Yep, 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 I see it. This piece is smaller than the other ones, but don't worry, it's done on purpose and I'm gonna explain you everything very soon. Now, once you have the base and the back of the couch, just connect them one on top of the other, put something heavy on top. We literally have the shape of the couch that is already done. I'm actually gonna sit down here, put a picture over here of how it's supposed to come out and go through the details together of how we're gonna transform this shape into the right one. So first of all, I kept aside the pieces that I cut it, the extra ones, because the couch has like two little curves on the side, so more volumes on the external side than the middle side. And we're gonna create those little Ds, let's say, on the top. Beside that, also the front, as you can see in the picture, goes a little bit higher, then there's like 
curve going in and then again the top. I have a degree in creating disasters and I didn't want to make one, so I created this technique where I would draw the stencil on all the papers, stick them together and then draw the exact picture I want and then you can cut it out so that you would have identical on the right and on the left. Now we have the perfect guideline and we are going to follow it with a marker. Once we're done on one side, we flip it around and do the same exact stencil on the other side and cut it all out. So the shape should be identical on, <laughs> on the right and on the left. You simply have to trace the lines that you have already cut it out on one side. Then we deattach it from one side, stick it on the opposite side, flipping it around and then stick it again and trace it again. At this point, it's going to be super easy to cut it out. Important step is also to connect the lines that are on top of the foam so that they both would touch each other. And then cut out everything. This is the biggest satisfaction ever to see the shape coming out in the drawing. It took like forever while doing it, but such a cool fast forward and I just see it appearing in front of my eyes. We literally did so much work. You can already start seeing the shape of the Togo couch. It looks insane. And it just took a couple of hours. Like I started like at 2 p.m. and it's not even sunset yet. I think it's like three hours. Anyway, take out now the pieces that I told you to collect before. And now we're gonna cut them in slices of 10 centimeters and then diagonally. So that they're gonna become little V's that we are gonna put on the corners so to make this extra volumes on the side. Very simple, draw lines of 10 centimeters and then you cut it diagonally so that you have two identical parts that you're gonna use both of them on the couch. Spray, wait a few seconds. And you go and stick it on top. You have to follow the shape that is now round of the couch and so push it really well down with the fingers and then you go and do exactly the same thing also on the other side. Here I had some extra material, you just cut it out and it becomes perfect. This is amazing, I am so thrilled. We moved indoor because it's freezing outside and also there's no light anymore and now all we have to do is make the dress for the couch. It's gonna be two layers, so a really soft foam and on top of it, the material. I chose something that looks like leather, but it's actually Alcantara and it's very, very more thick because it has also an extra material inside. Every single part is gonna be doubled with the foam like this, but first we literally are gonna place it on top and pin it in the shape that we want so that we do not need any weird plan or complicated drawing. We're gonna sew it as it looks. The original design has two main sewings, one on the top of the couch and one on the front. So here you see me placing the end of the material exactly where I want the sewing to appear. And then I'm gonna start folding the material so to create six folds on the front of the couch that are gonna become the shape. I do it on one side and then I go in the opposite direction just to make sure that the shape is gonna stay and that I will go and cut out the right amount of fabric. Okay, so what we got now is this huge line of fabric. If you look at the drawing, there's like 12 lines, of which six are folds, so that's why we did six folds. Now, I will draw now, better measure it, find out what's the height, and then divide it by the 12 lines, plus three centimeters on the top and the bottom that we're gonna use to sew it. After all my genius calculations, it came out that I had to do 12 lines of 15 centimeters. I was absolutely shocked that it came out such a round number, but yeah, I'll call it the luck of the beginner. You go ahead and connect all the lines. Day number two! It's time to take out our best friend, or more like our worst enemy, the sewing machine, and start stitching all the lines that we did on the fabric and sticking on it, with it, the foam on the other side. So basically the entire fabric is gonna become super smooshy and puffy and super comfortable. So basically what we're doing now is put the pins on the line that we have drawn previously and then you're gonna have to sew half centimeter on top and half centimeter under the line so that you will have a double line. Once you do it all over the material you're gonna have the nails on the other side and these are the lines that we're gonna follow to make our drawings. The 
moment a girl puts her hair up, that's the moment you know that it's getting serious. Guys, let's get this clear. I'm a terrible seamstress. I can make you any calculation you want, but I cannot go straight. And if this couch turned out nice with me doing it, you can definitely do a good job. Here we are. After we did this for like a trillion times, yep, you can see all the lines, both for the front and the back. We're now gonna place it directly on the couch, connect the lines together, and make the shape out of it. Let's get this pretty couch dressed up. We have a super important sewing on the front that was a little bit higher. So you're gonna see me now pulling up the material after that I connected it exactly at the height where I wanted it. Once I reach that angle, I finally go and connect the sewing of the lines of the top with the sewing of the line of the bottom. This is very important so that it's gonna look like a continuous line. Then I press the fabric together and once I reach the shape that I need on the couch, I go and pin them together. I'm gonna go do this all around the couch and even on the back. You're gonna have a lot of extra material falling on the front and we want it because that's the folds. And yeah, guys, that's exactly how it goes. On the other side, you do not close the material. Otherwise, how do you take the couch out of it? So you go and place line on line and then you put a pin on the top and a pin on the bottom where you want them to connect without closing the material. So now you can undress the couch and go sew it. You are gonna end up with a sort of rectangle. So all you have to do now is sew those four straight lines and you're done with this part of the couch. We finished sewing and I know that you're thinking, oh, how are you gonna put it back in your couch if you sewed all four of the corners? Well, usually I would say that I just didn't think about it, but this time it's not a mistake. Before taking it off, I did this picture over here to remind myself how many lines are visible and how many are gonna be under the couch. So that I could draw the square where we are gonna cut it completely out and add the zipper so to put it in and out the couch every time. Yes, it means your couch is washable. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's not so visible, but there is a blue line drawing a square over here. Can you follow it? Go ahead now and cut out three of the four lines, not all of four of them, because one is going to become where the fabric is together, and only on the rest of the material we are going to go and clip the zip. First of all, one pin on the bottom where we are going to pass with the sewing machine so that it doesn't open completely, and then just pin it around on both sides of the material so that you can open it and close it anytime. I really think that if I put together all the sewing that I did in my life, I wouldn't reach the amount of fabric that I had to sew today. Anyway, we did the zipper in the middle. We also did a vertical line in the middle of the couch that is literally a vertical line. And it's again, just an aesthetic thing. I did not do it on the flap, but here, all the corner, I fold it in half and it becomes the middle of the fabric. Let's go and dress our couch. It is finally time to put the material inside out and finally see how gorgeous all the sewings that we did actually turned out. There's a little unicorn passing in front of the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> very delicately go and insert all the couch cover on top of your foam and push it all the way in. It's important that you know that the corners of this couch have to be flipping outside. So pull out completely the material so that it makes four little ears. Then zip the bottom, recreate all the poles that we had pre-made and the couch is gonna appear in front of you. Only little step missing is adding buttons. No, these buttons do not have any use of opening and closing the couch. They're just gonna be useful to keep all your folds in shape. Doesn't matter how many times you're gonna throw yourself on the couch, it's gonna stay in perfect shape. So put the needle inside one of the folds and come out from the other side of the couch. Three on the back and three on the bottom. Ah yeah, you have to put another button also on the top so to hold the button in shape. So guys, the couch is done and I'm honestly super duper 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 excited about the result. Like always, let's go through the things that I would have done differently if I would have known. First of all, the nail that I bought wasn't long enough so I couldn't insert the buttons in all the little folds like this one where the foam was over 30 centimeters. I couldn't reach the nail on the other side. So the link that I'm gonna give you is for a longer nail. I couldn't do that and there was no way I was gonna wait for a new nail to arrive. Other thing that is important is to not put the foam in the middle of the material 
where you're gonna put the zipper. You just have to rip all the foam off because otherwise your sewing machine is gonna get stuck. But besides that, the project was so good, so easy, and I love the result. How much I spent? That was around 1,000 shekels. That in dollars is like $200. But there's to remember that Israel is a super expensive country. So the links that I'm gonna leave you down here are to order the material for a total amount of like $100, maybe $130. That's it. Want me to move out of the couch? You want to see it?